Welcome to Supersizing Magento. Like you said, I am Doug Goldberg, Vice President of Magento Solutions for Zero Light. Some of you might not know us, so I'll spend a minute on who we are. We're a Magento Platinum hosting partner. We're also a Microsoft Silver hosting partner. And I'm most proud of we're also a Dell Cloud partner. Actually, they resell our, their, our services to their large enterprise clients. We specialize in managed hosting and managed private cloud hosting. Uh, we're all about white glove treatment. People matter to us. Our client experience matters to us. So uh, that's what we're known for. We're 80 plus employees, thousands of clients. Some of our most notable names on the e-commerce side are names that you would know. Styles for Less, Yakima, Progressive, Munchkin, Sephora, and VF Browns. So you might be thinking to yourself, why is this presentation unlike traditional hosting company presentations? If you happen to see our presentation last year, this is completely different. It's completely different from what other hosting companies did the prior five years before that. And why we're doing it is because there's a perception in the market that we need to address. That perception is Magento can't scale. In reality, it can scale very easily. You just need the right team. Supersized Magento needs the right team. Think of it like when the Yankees win the World Series. They don't rest on their laurels, they go out to free agencies, and my CEO is shaking his head at me because he's from Boston and I knew he was gonna do that. It's the whole reason I used the Yankees. <laughs> but think of it like free agency. So you go out and you make your team better. So we found some best of breed technologies to bring to the Zero Lag team to basically squash the perception that Magento can't scale. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. What we're including is front-end application acceleration with InStart Logic, uh, back-end database scalability with Clustrix, and then you anchor that with the pro proven reliability, performance, and scale of ZeroLag, what we've become known for. That's our triangle there with ZeroLag, InStart Logic, and Clustrix, and the merchant in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let each technology partner, spend about three minutes introducing themselves since you might not know them. And then we're gonna ask some questions. Hopefully at the end we'll have time for some questions from you as well. But the panel we have Ami Badani from Instart Logic, Mike Acevedo from Clustrix, and then down there at the end, the handsome guy that's gonna fall through the window, that's Aaron Koch, our Vice President of Direct Sales from Zero Lab. So I'm gonna pass it off to Ami to spend a few minutes. That's for it, that's back, point it back there. That way, there you go. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our company, which is called Instart Logic, and essentially what we are is a software-defined application delivery service that is different and faster than traditional content delivery networks, and we'll go into a little bit about how that is. So we're about a four-year-old company headquartered in Silicon Valley, backed by some well-known investors, predominantly Kleiner Perkins, Andreessen Horowitz, and Greylock Ventures. And our primary value proposition is really about accelerating the application delivery of your website. So think of us as uh, basically loading your website faster than anyone else can in the industry. Uh, we have some well-known customers that you may recognize. So we have Staples, Washington Post, uh, Kate Spade, uh, Shutterstock, just to name a few, and essentially what we do is all of their web and mobile traffic is essentially served through our service, and we accelerate the performance and the page load times of their website. So think of us as analogous to a content delivery network in the sense that we focus on uh, website performance and website optimization, but we have one fundamental difference, and that's really in our architecture. So we have sort of a back-end cloud service and a front-end client piece and since we have control on both the cloud piece as well as the client piece, we're able to have end-to-end -end control of the content delivery path. So with that, it allows us to do some interesting things with regards to application streaming. We're able to basically chunk the application into different pieces with no changes to the underlying code and basically stream them faster so your page loads faster than uh, anyone else can in the industry. And again, this is because we have both a cloud and a client architecture. So in addition to our performance suite, we have security features for web applications, predominantly around a web application firewall, uh, DDoS protection, and PCI compliance. So I talked a little bit about sort of this cloud client architecture, but what's fundamentally different is really the cl 
client piece. So what we have is a tiny piece of JavaScript called the nanovisor.js. Essentially what it does is it wraps all the elements of the DOM. So it knows exactly what's an image, what's an HTML file, what's a JavaScript code, and we're able to sort of model the application behavior and figure out with our machine learning technology as to sort of what parts of your application can be sort of chunked down and streamed faster to optimize page load times. Oops. So in terms of sort of a practical example, Urban Outfitters, uh, we sort of ran a performance benchmark for Urban Outfitters, well-known, obviously, retailer. And on the right side is Urban Outfitters with our service. On the left side is Urban Outfitters with the traditional content delivery network. And you can see that we're about two seconds faster than any other traditional content delivery network. And that's because we both we have sort of presence on the cloud as well as presence on the client. And we have control of the end-to-end -end content delivery path. So we're, with that, we're able to improve page load times. And obviously, as you probably know, that for every second improvement in page load times, there's an increase in conversions, revenue, user satisfaction, et cetera. So with that, I'll hand it over to Mike. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mike Acevedo, CEO of Clusterix. Uh, the Clusterix database is the first enterprise database that has been validated and accepted into the technology partner program for Magento. And MySQL being the only other database that's been in the program. We recently were uh, added to the technology partner program, I think probably four weeks ago, after a multi-month effort with ECG, product management, some folks in engineering to make sure that the product worked appropriately. We've been around for eight years, but we've taken this focus around e-commerce because we've got a lot of customers with success in e-commerce. And we're a drop-in replacement for MySQL. So it's not like you have to recode everything to move to our product. Uh, this is just a few of our select e-commerce merchants, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to highlight some of these as we talk about supersizing, because that's really what Clusterix Database is all about, is about adding scale and performance and availability to any size environment. Um, so some of the examples, so if you think about large or frequently changing catalogs, I've heard this over and over the last couple of days, I hear it over and over as we talk to system integrators and merchants. And one of the unique characteristics of our database is that we can handle a, a very large catalog and, and distribute the workload of updating that catalog. My largest customer, not Magento customer, my largest customer has 170 million products and makes 6 million changes every single day, and that's Flipkart. So we can handle the scale, and we're working with Magento and some of the partners in optimizing for this. Uh, you know, we have a, our, a large retailer in uh, North America, No More Rec. In Start Logic also is, the, uh, is a partner for them. Uh, we do, uh, you know, they're a flash sales company, and every holiday season, they, right before Black Friday, they triple the size of their database. They, I think 600X was how large their business grew over the holiday season. At the end of the holiday season, they de-triple, for lack of a better term, the size of the database. So we can allow flexing of your environment to give you kind of right size to capacity during peak selling seasons. And we can do this you know, in the infrastructure with our partner, like Zero Lag. Uh, and, and we scale rights. So instead of a read-write environment or a sharding environment, our database, think of it as kind of master to the nth. We're master, 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 master. Every, th every node in the database cluster uh, acts as a read-write server, and as far as Magento is concerned, it's just one database. Um, we handle, like I said, seasonal flex, and, s and a lot of our customers have multiple sites where they're replicating across, either across the country or across the metro for disaster recovery. We've got a couple that do master-master, uh, where they're actually using two different sites for, um, as master sites. Uh, obviously, it's very complicated and not something you know, easily done. Uh, but we can handle that kind of workload. And we're great with respect to high availability. If you lose a node in the cluster, it just keeps running. And then obviously that's critical in you know, high shopping seasons or any time of the year. You don't want to lose revenue because an instance or a node died. Did I pass one up? I did. So we're, we're a, uh, we can handle lots of uh, Magento nodes, but we're a distributed cluster. Uh, and give you performance, reliability, scale, and the ability to flex your business uh, up and down. We just recently published a benchmark. You can get a copy of it at our booth. Uh, we did a benchmark comparing MySQL to our cluster, and we were able to deliver, you can see, 7.1 checkouts a second 
versus the most we could get out of MySQL was three using the Magento Toolkit 14.1 or 1.14 uh, and deliver you know, 317,000 shoppers an hour. We also ran a, uh, and that's an 8% conversion, we ran a benchmark with 20% conversion and delivered over 12 checkouts a second. So we can help you supersize your environment for flash sales, peak sales, or everyday sales. Oh, okay. There. Thanks, Mike. So the first question is going to be the install logic. So Ami, tell me how and why is your architecture different than other CDNs in the market? Yeah, so if you think about CDNs and sort of where they ceased to exist, it was you know, 15 years ago when CDNs were first created. And web applications looked very different back then, predominantly static applications. And the primary challenge was really getting that content, the static content, to in proximity to the end user. So that's sort of what CDNs focused on, and by and large, they did a great job of it. But today, web applications, as you know, look very different. They're dynamic, personalized, lots of images, lots of code. And as a result of that, uh, you need a different architecture. So like I said, we have a cloud client architecture, and we have control of the end-to-end -end content delivery path. So we focus not necessarily on the last mile, because that's not necessarily the challenge anymore. The internet's gotten a lot faster. And really, the challenge has really moved to mobile devices, how do you have fast content on mobile devices and over a wireless congested network? So we predominantly optimize for mobile devices and the wireless last mile. Great, right, thank you. The next question is when we talked the first time, it was the most important to me. So explain to me how does HTML streaming help performance of page load time and impact the CPU? That's the part as an infrastructure company I like to know about. Okay, great. So uh, as I mentioned, there's this cloud client technology. And with the, the cloud client technology, um, essentially we know what part of your HTML file is the head and what part of your HTML file is the body. On average, the HTML page, it, probably one-tenth of it is on average the head, and the rest of it is the body. So what we're able to do is we're able to sort of separate the head and the body and stream the HTML head first and then transparently in the background, load the body. So what that allows you to do is sort of optimize page load times and load the page faster. And as a developer, you can sort of put those critical elements in the head because you know that's what the user is gonna see first. What traditionally happens is that HTML has to be sent down completely in order for the page to load. So since we're able to sort of separate the head from the body, we're able to sort of load the page 10 times faster. And you know, with less content reduction, you obviously have uh, no impact or less impact on CPU usage. Great, thank you. One more. JavaScript is a client-side script that has tremendous advantages, but creates a huge drag on performance. How does your JavaScript streaming functional functionality optimize performance on the client? Yeah, good question. So um, as you guys face this uh, from a development standpoint, there's sort of this trade-off with lots of JavaScript code, drag on performance, or minimal JavaScript code and increase in performance or page load times. We've sort of thrown that out the window and optimized in terms of how much JavaScript, JavaScript code you have and the performance improvement. So what we're able to do is, like I said, we have this cloud client technology and we have a machine learning algorithm that basically learns the behavior of your application. And what we've realized over time is that actually 90% of the JavaScript code in your application is rarely or if never used, and 10% is almost always used. So we're able to sort of learn parts of your application, figure out what part of your JavaScript is actually used, and sort of stream that down and cache the 90% or so that's never used. And we do that for first-party JavaScript content as well as third-party JavaScript content, where since we have the client piece, we're able to detect what's third-party JavaScript and sort of redirect all of the third-party JavaScript to our service and stream that down similar to sort of our traditional JavaScript script streaming service and optimize page load times and performance. Great, thank you. What's an interesting aside, I had a conversation recently with a new Magento client that used to be a front end performance optimization developer for City Search. And our conversation was basically the ongoing struggle he had in that job between marketing and what he did, where he would spend six months reducing page load times by a second to only have marketing come in and ask for something that would cause it to increase by two seconds. So what I see Instart Logic being able to do is help with that kind of battle that goes on. Yeah. So tell me a little bit of what the typical performance improvements look like. So on average, so we guarantee 20% faster um, page load times than sort of any other traditional content delivery network. 
um, provider in the industry. So 20% is sort of our um, standard, we will beat it every single time. But I would say on average, we're probably roughly around 50% faster um, in terms of if you use our service versus a traditional CDN, we can, be, we can increase your page load times by 50%. Great, thank you. Mike, I'm gonna ask you a few questions now. Great, Can what is your base setup and how does it compare to the benchmark you just published? Sure, so, so the, the minimum configuration for a cluster, cluster uh, is three nodes or three servers. Um, the, uh, and, and that gives us the ability to have redundancy and distribute data, distribute load at the same time. So if you lose a node, you still have an active cluster that's still taking orders. Uh, if you lose a second node, then you, you would have to worry about it, but we always have built-in redundancy. Uh, for the benchmark, we, we used up to nine nodes, and the purpose of the benchmark was not price performance. We could have optimized this thing for, for price performance, but we did this benchmark initially to just show and demonstrate that there are barriers that, that we've smashed through, and there's a lot that can be done here. Uh, in this benchmark, those nine nodes were only at 30% database server utilization, so we probably didn't have to five, but it wasn't about optimizing there. Great. And I think the next one, let me bring up a chart you to ask this one. We'll come back to some of these. So how does Clustrix perform versus MySQL for flash sales? Uh, for flash sales. So you don't have that on here, but um, uh, we don't have MySQL on this chart. So maybe you can go back one. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a perfect example right there. So uh, the, the, the bottom, the x-axis here is the, the conversion percentage. So on the far right, you can see 20% conversion. More like flash sales, actually, you know, you can get the 50 or 60% conversion. But we can handle and deliver 222,000 shoppers an hour with a 20% conversion um, in this benchmark. MySQL, the most they could do was 135,000 at 8%. When we got to 20%, there was a much higher error rate, and we couldn't deliver these kind of numbers. Great. I think the next chart is for the next question. So let me. There we go. How do you add additional capacity, and what does it add in scale or performance? So the, so the, the beauty of the cluster is cluster because we do we have we allow flexing is you can add capacity very easily. Uh, once the node is on the network, you tell the database with one command to expand itself, and it'll automatically add that read write capacity, distribute data in the background and begin working right away. That gives you extra read-write capacity almost instantly to the cluster. Um, this, this demonstration here, I mean this chart here just shows the difference between uh, conversion percentage and checkouts per hour, but, but adding uh, capacity is very simple. If you have three nodes, you go to four, you roughly add 20, 25% read-write capacity. Great, last question. Where is the crossover point where MySQL fails and Clustrix starts to really perform? Typically, we recommend to our customers when you're starting to do kind of what we call database gymnastics, run natural things, when you're putting MySQL in the biggest box possible, you're about to run into a ceiling. When you're splitting reads and writes, or when you're thinking about sharding your data, that's when you should be talking to us, because we do all of that stuff automatically in the background without all the massive project planning and then adding all that fragility into the environment. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yep. So I'm going to ask Aaron Koch the next question. Sure. The guy that's been hanging out on the side over there. So at Just the beginning, we talked about, life. exactly. We talked about why was Zero Lag doing this presentation? Why was it different? The question I have for Aaron is, now that we've heard the benefits of Instart Logic and Clustrix separately, tell us how Zero Lag incorporates it and what's it mean. Sure. I'm going to actually step out from my precarious position here. Yeah, totally. Um, there just you go. come out here. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just show you what the solution that we're talking about looks like uh, in a graphic representation. So this is the solution. Uh, I'm just going to take you guys through the different components really briefly, give you a lay of the land. All right, so uh, at the top left corner, you have Instart Logic that's representing uh, the HTML, Java streaming, and application acceleration. Uh, once you come in through the internet into the cluster itself, there's redundant firewalls, redundant switches, uh, and redundant load balancing service. Um, the three web servers are represented here in yellow, uh, and they're connecting to an HA, uh, an HA VIP so that they can communicate within a secure IP space. Um, 
In terms of synchronizing the, the web nodes, uh, there's a couple different ways that uh, that, that can be done. Uh, typically, uh, something like rsync, which would copy the files from one server to the next, but it leaves, uh, it leaves some time where the servers aren't actually uh, carrying the same files. So what we do is we use NFS. So on the left, far left there in orange, we have the two uh, NFS servers. It's a network file system and allows uh, us to mount the, the same file system on all three of the web servers. So all three web servers are actually looking at one single live set of files. Um, and then we have uh, up, up in the corner here is a staging server. It's pretty irrelevant to the cluster itself. Uh, and then Clustrix database servers, uh, three of them on a floating HA VIP as well. Um, and this is where, that, where, that sc where the scalability really lies. Uh, I, th I think the most important thing to take away here is acceleration on the front end, infinite scalability on the back end, and resiliency. And the reason that we put this architecture together, the reason that we brought these partners into this solution and created this solution, uh, is really to dispel that myth that, or that perception in the marketplace that if you're a huge e-commerce company, you have to look up market to some other platform and that Magento cannot take you where you need to go. And, and what we wanted to do was prove that wrong because it's false. Uh, so front end acceleration, back end scalability and re resiliency with Clustrix, uh, and that's the solution. So great. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. No problem. And I can't believe we did all of that in 20 minutes. So I wanted to, at this point, see if any of you had any questions for any of the technologies, ZeroLag, InstartLogic, or Clustrix that you would like to ask. I see one in the corner over there. 